Oh, camera's fuzzy again. Oh, there it goes. It's focused. All right. It's kind of fuzzy. Wait a minute. <clears throat> How's that look? Look better? All right. Free will offering. You know, we're reading Isaiah chapter 6, and he sees a vision of God and his train. The robe fills the temple, and he is <clears throat> filled with a holy, reverent revelation of his own sin, his own, that he's like, wow, here I am. They're crying, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. He's the only one. The earth is filled with his glory, but yet Isaiah cries out, I'm done. I'm a man of unclean lips, and I have seen God. And the Bible says an angel came that took a coal with thongs and touched the mouth of Isaiah with the coal and said, your guilt and your sin has been taken away. It's been atoned for. And they begin to say, who's going to go? Who will go? And Isaiah says, I will be that free will offering. Giving of ourselves and of our time to pray, to intercede, to witness, to share the love of God is an offering that we must continually offer freely. Not because we have to or we think or we we." The only thing we're promoting is Jesus. That's it. His salvation, his love, his life, his word. Once it turns into anything but him, then it's not a free will offering because the Lord gave us freely. Listen, God gave us freely. Why are we to charge? You know, put, demand something that was given to us. This is what we do with ourselves. And we, we always want something. We always, there's always an ulterior motive and a manipulation behind it, it, that's for the flesh or for pride or for, you know, uh, how we look and, and how it looks. But he says, listen, Isaiah, I'm gonna send you to a people and he says, for how long? What am I going to do? And he goes, you know, I want you to tell them that what they see is not the truth. What they say is not the truth. What they're understanding and what they know isn't the truth. I want you to tell them your, your, the, the truth of me. Be ever hearing but never understanding, ever seeing but never perceiving ever knowing, but never understanding. It's like everybody thinks they know, but they don't because it goes back to this free will offering. You see, God has given us freely of himself, of his love, of his truth, of his power, of his spirit. And yet we treat it like it wasn't freely given to us. Let's put it that way. The reason I got this was when Paul says, I'm going to be a fool. Let me, let me talk to you like a fool would. And he starts to boast about everything he's went through, beating, stoning, shipwrecked three times, you know, naked, you know, in the cold, hungry, thirsty, you know. They had a whole city trying to, you know, they had an APB put out on him, you know, a, a fugitive in a city trying to get him. But, but he says, God delivered me through all of that. And, and he says, you know, I could preach about all the stuff that I went through and talk about all the stuff that, but that's not what the offering is. That's not what the gospel is. It's about what Jesus did for us. It's what about God did for us. A free will offering. You know, going to church, going to church is a free will offering. You're right. You don't have to go. You don't have to pray. You don't have to worship. You don't have to fellowship. It's
it's a free will offering. But remember, we reap what we sow. What we offer is what we get in return. If you, you offer nothing, you'll get nothing. If you just ignore, oh, yeah, okay, God's, you know, it's cool. You know, God's real. Yeah, the Bible. Yeah, you know, but it's so messed up, man. Forget that. You know, it's jacked up. It's the end days. You know, it's just going to go downhill from now. <laughs> That's not true. Because even in, in Isaiah and in this prophecy, he says, you want a sign? He tells the king, God tells Isaiah, confront that king and tell him, this is what's going to happen. And Isaiah says, ask for a sign. You know, you, you want a sign that what I'm telling you, this is God, he's, he's speaking. He's like, I'm not going to test God. Man, this dude's been testing everything else. And then when it comes to God, the real one, He's like, oh, I ain't gonna do nothing. I ain't gonna ask for prayer. I don't want God to do to do anything for me. You know, no free will offering for me. Come on, man. This guy, that's how the world is. You and, and Isaiah says this. I'm gonna give you a sign. The virgin shall be with child, and it's gonna fulfill a prof a prophecy never, never to be accomplished by anything or anybody except God and him alone. He says, you know what? You're right, Isaiah. You're right, Ahaz. Only God. Only God. And he gave his son, Jesus, as a free will offering. Look at that. Thank you, Father. The psalm is where I get this from David in Psalm 54. He had a, he had a, a a group of people rat him out. He was running from Saul and they ratted David out and they say, man, he's hiding over here, man, in our, in our region. You know, he's up here, you know, hanging out. And David's like, all right, God, his whole prayer just goes to God. He says, God, protect me. You're my strength. You're my fortress. I'm not turning to anything but you. And he says, I'm going to have a, f when there's no reason to praise God, He's been exposed. They're, they're all against him. They want to kill him. You know, they're turning him in. You know, they don't want to help him. And, and he says, you know what? I'm going to give a free will offering because I know it's God's the only one. That's it. And uh, what our, our, our uh, proverb today ends by saying, when you sit down, wherever you're at, Observe what's before you. It's talking about eating, and if you and if you begin to lust and want to eat, overeat, and be a glutton, he says, put a knife through your throat because life is more than food and this earth and this material. You need to focus on the eternal. You know, you look at oh, what does this church have to offer me? Oh, good music, nice seats, you know, great lights, you know big screen, 3D, you know, beautiful sound. This church is offering me all these great things. And he's all like, you, you forget that. That's not why you go to church. You go to church to give your free will offering to God because he has freely given you everything in Christ.